Hello, hello everyone, and today I will be talking about the mistreatment of Deja Sky. Every season on Drag Race, production picks one queen to dunk on, they give them extra low placements, they rob them of wins, and on season 14, that queen was 100% Deja Sky. The first instance of mistreatment we see is in the talent show. Deja decides to do a cheerleading comedy routine, and it does not go particularly well. Even though her final runway is one of the strongest and most unique of the night, she does end up in the bottom and sends home Diabetti. In the event that there is a bottom to this episode, I fully agree with her being in the bottom. However, I don't think it was fair to have a bottom two. In almost every other split premiere we have seen, the bottom two queens have just been low, and I don't understand why they stopped doing that for this season alone. Watching Daya and Orion get their dreams crushed was not good TV, and even though they ended up getting to return, having a bottom two only for a fake-out elimination was very unfair to June, Deja, Orion, and Daya. With that in mind, I think the fair placement for Deja was low. It would suck to not get to see her lip sync to Fallen, but if we're being fair, there just shouldn't have been a bottom two lip sync this episode. For the next few episodes, Deja is judged pretty fairly. She is safe in the ball, she is towards the middle of her group and the middle of the cast overall. In the acting challenge, she plays a very underrated role in the fight with Angeria and gets a well-deserved high placement. Her runway was good and she is slowly redeeming herself from her talent show. That said, she shouldn't need to redeem anything, she should have been low. The next challenge is the advertising challenge, and while she did do a very good job this week, I don't think I could justify putting her in the top over someone like Angie, Bosco, Camden, or Maddie. In this episode, she was safe, but 100% high safe. Next is Glamazon Prime, and this is where we really start to see Deja get thrown under the bus. Maddie Morphosis flopped this challenge and is one of the slots in the bottom two, leaving us with Jasmine, Deja, and Carrie. Looking at Jasmine, the final product looks okay, it's just that the finer details are not there. As for Deja, I think she did fine. She had a concept, she had a few materials that worked with each other very well. Then we have Carrie Colby. I think Carrie is a very entertaining and talented queen, but this challenge was just not it for her. Credit where credit is due, I think the hair, makeup, and accessories were pretty solid. Unfortunately, the dress as a whole was just not there. I could probably talk for a while about my issues with this dress, but I'm gonna keep it short. Due to the giant woven piece of beige fabric, you can't really see the shape of the dress or really any details, and the dress itself is just kind of a mess. I wish I could say I knew what she was going for, but honestly, I, I don't think I can. With all of that in mind, I truly don't understand why Deja was low over Carrie. Like, from a production perspective, I definitely would have understood if they put Carrie as low to have Jasmine and Maddie lip sync after that fight, but I truly don't understand why Deja ended up in this when she was pretty clearly the best of the four. She was the only one who had a clear concept of what they were doing, her final runway looked good, there were intricate details, but there were also places for the eye to rest. Deja should have been safe this week, that is all I have to say. Then is Daytona Wind, where Deja is pretty fairly safe. I think she did a good job, but I couldn't really justify putting her in the top over anyone else. Next up is the second final nine challenge, which is girl groups. Deja does an incredible job. Not only is she very entertaining throughout the challenge, her teammates both kind of flop, and she is at a massive disadvantage as she ended up with the worst song of the three. Ignoring all of that, Deja spins Straw into gold and ends up giving one of the strongest performances of the challenge, getting a well-deserved high placement. Then we arrive at the DragCon panel hosting challenge, and Deja is robbed. The top two queens of the challenge are Bosco and Deja. Looking at Bosco, she had an okay runway and a great performance individually in the challenge. Unfortunately, she got the role of moderator. If you are the moderator, you are partially responsible for how the other people in your group do, and while I do still believe Bosco deserved to be high for the performance she gave, Deja deserves to win this. Bosco might have been really good, but Deja was just great this week. There isn't a single aspect of this challenge where she did not dominate. 
In the challenge, I think her pacing of the group was flawless, and she was the best one there in terms of the actual challenge. Then on the runway, she absolutely dominated every other member of this cast. This 100% should have been Deja's week to win. This entire performance was just a how-to guide of how to moderate, and it was just a joy to watch, I'll say it again, Deja was robbed. Next is Snatch Game, where Deja finally gets the win. It is well-deserved, but if we are being honest, if production had literally any other option, I think they would have gone with it. I don't know what Deja did, but production had it out for her all season and I think they would have taken any excuse to not give her this win. Next up, we arrive at the Rusical, and once again, Deja Sky is thrown under the bus for literally nothing. In terms of judging, the clear top two are Daya and Camden, and the clear bottom two are Bosco and Georges. That leaves us with Angeria, Deja, and Willow. Looking at Angeria, she did a fine job in the challenge. It was not bad by any means, but it was definitely on the lower end in terms of this group. Then on the runway, I think she was fine. Her runway would have worked a lot better if they hadn't changed the theme, but oh well. Then looking at Deja, I think she did a great job. Not only did she have one of the strongest individual performances of the Rusical, she was also very entertaining in the large part of the Rusical she spent as a background dancer. Unfortunately, just like Angeria, Deja got screwed by her runway. I believe the original theme for this runway was holographic, that is something that Deja's runway fits to a T. Changing the theme to Mirror Mirror really only hurts Angeria and Deja, and while I don't think that was a choice made specifically to hurt Angeria and Deja, I have to imagine that since production knew what they were going to wear for the runway, they at least factored it in. Then we have Willow, who did a very good job this episode. I think choosing to play the Green Fairy and only actually be on the stage for part of the performance was a very strategic move and I applaud her for it. In terms of the runway, it's not my favorite, but I definitely see the appeal. With all of that in mind, I think the fair judging would be Angie as low and then Deja slash Willow as safe or hide, but that really just comes down to personal taste, at least for me. While she was robbed of a win in that hosting challenge, I think this is the worst episode in terms of the mistreatment of Deja. While in the past, a lot of it could technically be explained by personal taste, in this episode, Deja is fully just thrown under the bus because production doesn't want to put anyone else near the bottom. It was incredibly unfair and Deja deserved a lot better than she got all season. The next challenge, Deja's final challenge on the season, is the roast. It is very obvious based off the runway and challenge that Deja, Georges, and Daya are the bottom three of the week. With that in mind, production has kind of backed themselves into a corner as they are very close to the finale, so this week needs to be a double elimination. As a result of that, all three queens are in the bottom, they lip sync to Good For You, Daya wins, and Deja and Georges are eliminated. If you watch back the performances, most of them flop, the vast majority the challenge, but Deja's final joke lands and it is one of the best of the night. That, along with the fact that she had a solid runway, should have saved her, at least in my book. I'm not gonna claim she did great in this challenge, but Daya and Georges were the clear bottom two, it's just that production backed themselves into a corner and eliminating Deja was really the only thing they could do. The next challenge is the Rumix, and this one is a bit difficult as it is one of the only modern seasons of Drag Race to not have a traditional girl group challenge. While we did get to see Deja in this season's girl groups, I don't think that is 100% compatible to a Rumix, so I'm not 100% sure where Deja would fall here. If production is behind the steering wheel, I hate to say it, but there is literally no shot that Deja makes it to the end, but if I'm trying to judge it in a fairer way, I really don't know how it would turn out. I don't want to say that Deja would end up in the bottom for a performance that literally hasn't even happened, but I do think that in this timeline, Deja does still get cut at the Rumix. That said, she has a much better track record and gets at least $5,000 more. 
I think the judging I've done here does a much better job of showcasing Deja's skills as a performer and a competitor. Overall, Deja was very much mistreated. Looking at a track record comparison between the fair track record and the original, if the season were judged fairly, Deja starts out with a lead that grows ever stronger as the season plays out and makes it to final five instead of technically tying for seven. I think that would have been a much better way for the season to play out, and to sum things up, I've said it before and I will 100% say it again, Deja Sky was mistreated all season and ultimately robbed. Hey, it's Drag Race Rejudged. Do you want gay sh Well then you should check out the RuPaul's Drag Race Rejudged YouTube channel and hit subscribe.